offerings that are genuine, okay? Very beautiful card, very fitting. This card is represented by the number six. Sixes are about choices, okay? Um, focusing on your own desires, you know, equilibrium, balance um, between two opposite sides. Um, sixes can also represent, you know, a personal choice. Um, it can represent love or deciding on love. And um, six also represents the lovers in the tarot. So definitely examining one's motives when deciding what path to take. This is a beautiful, beautiful card. It looks really uh, focused on ascension and coming from the heart center, um, the heart chakra. The fourth chakra. All right, I give offerings that are genuine. The core of Buddhist philosophy stems from an understanding that life is riddled with suffering and it is our attachment to suffering that lends our life experiences more suffering. In finding mental, emotional, and spiritual liberation from suffering, we attain nirvana, the transcendental state where we are free from the fetters of materialism, detached from the effects of karma, and liberated from the cycle of death and rebirth. In the Emerald Tablets, translated by Dr. Doriel. A comparable archetype is considered in the halls of Amente or the Akashic Records, where records of past and future lives coexist, but there is also a space where the soul is free from the body, living in light and able to begin the cycle yet again, if it is so chooses. Dwell here or leave here when thou desireth. Free is a mente to the son of man. Take thou up life in what form thou desireth. Child of the light that has grown among men, choose thou thy work for all should must labor. Never be free from the pathway of light. The Emerald Tablets of Thaw. In exploring the ideal of giving offerings that are genuine from a space of non-attachment with the living philosophy of a light heart in harmony with authentic with authenticity beyond any dogmatic system, we must be reminded of the core meaning of what it is to offer in the first place. The word offering finds its root from the Latin word offeri meaning to bestow or present but it eventually evolved into the old english offrion which meant to sacrifice in the way of an offering to a deity modern society has conditioned us to believe that we must give to receive and in order to receive we must give it's a platitude that inadvertently feeds the idea of attachment because if we give so much and feel as though we are not receiving an equal echo back, it can cause us to experience the suffering of expectations. The popular movie and book series, The Secret, further fed this idea not only in giving to receive, but also by stressing that by echoing thoughts and visualizing the material possessions you want, need, or to have, the universe will open every path and allow the new car or million dollar check 
to magically materialize in your life. While thought and action do echo back into reality and manifest or materialize in some fashion or another, we must be reminded of what we want and why we want. And if the reason is to feed the soul or fill a void, everything flows out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swings manifest in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. The Kabbalion. The fifth hermetic principle from the esoteric Kabbalion relates to the principle of rhythm and the fact that the universe always compensates for what it puts out mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. In living in alignment with the heart and giving genuine offerings that provide spiritual nourishment without any expectation of getting something back, we, in effect, do get something back by the kindness that ripples through the collective unconscious. The being of our doing, the life within our living. The biblical parable Jesus shares in Matthew 19:24 further solidifies the key that unlocks the shackles of suffering. And again, I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Some claim that the accurate translation relates to a particular gate in Jerusalem known as the eye of a needle and only the camel free from baggage or attachment is able to pass through the space because the opening was so small. This perspective of the metaphor seems to have its heart in the idea that you may pass through into heaven with what you are, what you've done, and how you've lived, not with what you have acquired, collected, and attached yourself to materially. Liberation may be found in loving all without attachment, giving because it feels good to give, and allowing your presence to be a gift given without expectation of anything in return. Heart of the day, I give offerings that are genuine. Giving from the heart, operating from the fourth chakra, healing the heart, blessing others, and... Um, offering what is genuinely in your heart from a place of true true sincerity and love and that is your card of the day and i hope everyone is doing well stay in your power spread love wherever you go keep your vibrations high okay know that even in the twilight of the darkest and coldest night of december please remember that you'll be fine nothing Nothing can stop what's truly divine. Many blessings. Love and light.